because you don't want to get a big shock when we get up to midterm and then we got all this stuff to go through at the last minute. I know some people thrive like that, but I never could do it. So that's why I got these due dates. And I said, yes, they're not hard and fast, but you know, you can go faster for sure. You can go slower a, a little bit. All right, so let's go back over to the uh, notes. And we're going to get try, uh, try to get through 10.2. Well, I don't know. I mean, you're they're the ones going to have to tell me because I don't like doing that kind of stuff. If I got a whole bunch of stuff to do and do everything, learn the whole thing that we've been going through here for three weeks in a day or two, I don't know. I mean... I never did like doing that. I'm better at it than I used to be, but I don't recommend that for students. So if you do that, you're kind of on your own, you know. All right, so uh, we looked at um, the topic of statements when we went through basically what's essentially 3.1. So now we're going to look at the topic of truth tables. Now. A truth table is just essentially all the possible outcomes when you're dealing with a compound statement to find out in what cases it's true or false. Because remember, we're building up to, uh, to constructing what's called an argument. And if we want to find, have an argument that's airtight, then we need to be able to establish what all of the various truth aspects are, are to it. So what we look at is start with the very basics and the easiest one to kind of get a handle on, and it's the negation. And um, I show it as cases, and I will sum it up when we get to the end with the actual tables, if you like doing it that way. But the problem that with tables is it kind of it kind of gives you the impression that you just need to memorize them. But I try to sum these up with one sentence or each of the truth tables up with one sentence that'll help you understand it a little bit better and visualize it, because that's the way I like to do it. All right, so the, the negation is the only one of these uh, operations, we'll call it. It's not a connective because it can work on one statement. It's the only one that's only got two possible outcomes, and this is what it is. If a statement is true and we negate it, then it becomes false. And then if we start out with a false statement and then we negate it, it becomes true. So here's a couple of examples. Well, today's not that's, I'm going to change this. Okay, today is Thursday, and that's a true statement. So if I negate that statement, all right, all right, it's taking a sweet time here to update. But if I uh, take the negation of today, Thursday, not Thursday, it becomes today is not, not Thursday, and that's a false statement. So that's case one. Now, if I said something that's obviously false, and I say this class meets at 2 p.m., that's false statement. But if I negate it, then the negation is the class does not meet at 2 p.m., then that's a true statement. So those are all the possible outcomes for a negation. There's only two of them. It's the easiest one. And essentially, it just turns opposite. Starting out with true, negation gives us a false statement. If we start out with a false statement, take the negation, it gives us a true statement. All right, so let's look at um, the next one is and. Now, this is what we call an actual connective because it has to be done where you put together 
two statements. Okay, that's why it's called a connective. And when you've got two statements, well, what you're gonna end up with is four different outcomes and let me try to explain. All right. This, and there's four outcomes, only one of them which is true. If both the first statement and the second statement, P and Q we'll call it, are true, then the and is true. If the first statement is true and the second statement is false, then it's a false statement. Is anybody else having that? I mean, the best thing to do, if it's not me, because I see my little blue light on, is to just reload. All right, reload your uh, browser window. And then case three is if um, P is false and the second statement is true, then the statement is still false. And certainly also if both of them are false. Let me kind of explain with this little Venn diagram. Now it says A and B, but you can think of it. Well, reload. I mean, I can reload, but it takes time for me to do it. And it cuts everybody off. So reload yours on your end. And if it doesn't work, then I can go ahead and do it if I hear from other people. Because remember, we got maybe like 12 or 15 people in the class. Are you sure you're giving the, uh, well, let me go ahead and reload it. Mine now. Okay, so um, I'm going to assume I'm better. Okay. So I'm making an illustration with this um, um, Venn diagram from Chapter 2. All right. Remember we had the intersection? The intersection is analogous to and. You have to be if you're in the intersection of two sets, you're right in that blue area. You're in A and you're in B. Okay? If you're over here where my cursor's at right now, you're in A only. In other words, A is true, but you're not in B and it's false. So the whole statement is false. You're not in the intersection. Well, you might have to just close out your session and reopen it. That's the next thing to do. Just close the window, go back and restart and join again. And it all depends too. If you're not on a Windows computer and you're trying to do things in a phone and all that, I mean, you um, you may have other issues because I don't understand how all that works. And then case four, remember that's out here. And so you're neither one. And so these little Roman numerals here sort of relate to the individual regions. All right. So the way that I like to look at this, and it's called the conjunction, and it's only true when both statements are true. Okay. 
Let's look at the other one, the or. This is like the union. And you can see from this little Venn diagram that the whole of the two sets are filled in. A and the intersection is filled in and B is, is filled in. So as long as you're in one of these three places, then the whole or is true. The disjunction is true. This one now has three possible cases that are true. In other words, if you're right here, if you're right there in that middle one, where you're in both, or if you're over here in just B, then you're in the disjunction. You're in or. You're in that union we talked about. And I think we talked about last time how this is called the inclusive or, which means one or the other or both. So that's why uh, in um, chapter two, they always basically said that when they said how many are in A or B or both. So the only time that the disjunction is false it's when you're out here, when you're out in that white area. And the way that I like to sum this up, the disjunction is true when either P or Q or both are true and false only when both are false. Mr. Cruz? Yes? Okay, so you know how for the first part, the uh, second one was if it's if the first statement is true and the second is false the statement is going to be false but but the second one uh on the uh for the disjunction is mm -hmm. it true because it's inside the circles that's why it's true well yeah it's the blue area see okay. it it course this is just trying to take it back to the idea in chapter 2 with the um the union and the intersection and yeah. is analogous to the intersection, okay, unless yeah. you bo have both statements be true. And I'll just illustrate with an example. All right, if I tell you, you uh, in order to get out of this class alive, you either got to give me a $5 bill or you got to make an A, then that means you have to do both of those things in order to get out alive, right? Yeah. If you just give me a $5 bill, then you failed at the requirements. If you only make an A in the course, then you fail in the requirements because you've not done the other part. And then if you don't do either one, of course you fail at that attempt. But if you do both, then you unlock the key to the golden gate. That's when you've done both A and B, P and Q are true. I'm just making that up to just make an illustration. It's actually not that hard to get out of this class. Or at least not to get out alive. All right. But this one is a kind of a looser a set of constraints here. We'll just say, in order to pass this class, you have to have a C average or you got to pass the final. And again, these are things I'm kind of making up. You don't take these. So you got to do one or, or other of those things, let's say. So then you've got three things to essentially save you. You could have a C average or, or pass the final. Do either one of those and you're okay. And even if you do both, you're okay. But where you would fail is if you don't do either one now. And that case is also false up here with the and as well, when you don't do either one. So that's the one that they agree on. All right, so um, we're gonna to try to do um, a truth table and show you how that works. And I'm gonna um, try to draw it on the board. It, it's kind of a pain in the neck, but I can probably find a truth table generator on the online, but I think it'd be better to um, uh, 
to try to do it like an old-fashioned way by hand. Uh, and I'll kind of give you some um, pointers as we go. But basically, you got to find out what the statement is. Is it a negation, a conjunction, a disjunction, conditional, or biconditional statement? We haven't talked about the conditional or the biconditional uh, as far as truth tables yet, so we're just going to be looking at the negation, conjunction, and disjunction first. Now, you got to have all possible combinations of true and false on the table. And it really goes back to this to the end thing. So if you got two statements, that's your n, and two to the n is four. Most of your um, truth tables are going to have four rows. If you've got three statements, then you double it to eight. You won't have any larger than that. And then you got to find the truth values for the individual part, uh, parts of the statement using those truth values that we looked at, those truth tables. We've only got three of them now. We got the negation, we got the conjunction and the disjunction. And then one final step to find the original statement. And so we'll work one out. There's going to be one column that represents the whole statement. All right, so this is the one I'm going to do. And I'm going to do it over there on the board. All right, so um, P or Q and not P. And I'm going to have to come back and draw that in because I can't Let's make sure that that was it. So this one, I don't have a, uh, something looks like I can draw it in. So P or Q and not P. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw out um, this little thing here. I got a little line drawer here. My first line is going to be, oops, that's not line. That's, ah, I can't believe I did that. All right, so what I'm going to do and as I go, I'm going to kind of see how many um, columns I need. But what I want to have is I want to have I'm not going to count this one, but I'm going to have four rows here. Make sure you got enough room. All right. Now you need two columns on the side here. And if you hand on like this, you'll get all the possible scenarios you need. Okay, you got a P and a Q in this statement, and that's why you've got four rows. Because you got two statements. Two to the nth power, so two to the second power is four. So if you do this, you'll always get all of the possible combinations. Now, I remember when I first started doing this, I actually took logic in a philosophy class. And I remember um, 
I uh, was trying to like recreate these every time and make sure I had them, which was a pain in the neck. But if you do, the first um, column is two twos and two falses, and then the second one is true, false, true, false. Then you've got all of the possible scenarios here. You got two trues, you got true, false, you got false, true, and you got false, false. And that's the ones that we talked about. That's the four different scenarios for two statements. All right, so what I need to do is I need to build this from the inside out. So the, the most natural place to go is in here, inside, and do that or first. Now, since it's just the basic or, then it's going to follow that step of what we said, that as long as I got one T in a row, then it's the or is true. So this is true. This is true. This is true. And that one's false. It's only false when you got two falses. Otherwise, it's true. You just have to have one true in there to make an or true. <clears throat> All right, now the next thing we need is a not P. And not P is just going to be the opposite of P. So I'm just going to go over to P. And remember what we said is if it's true, then uh, negation is the opposite. So it's going to be false, false. True, true. And you should be able to verify that P and not P are just exactly opposite of one another now. Okay, everybody with me now? Take a gander at it. If you got any questions, feel free to ask. All right, now we got one last step. And this right here, we could, uh, uh, this basically decides, as I had said before, this is a conjunction statement because the most dominant connective is that conjunction there. And that is the statement that you always do last, the most dominant one. So what I need to do is I need to put together these two with the and rule. All right, and I'm going to just write the whole thing in there. So that's just the thing up here. And so I've got this one built, which is right here. I've got this one built right here. So I'm going to use my and rule on these two. And so what I like to do is just to go back and just meditate on that little uh, sentence that I used to sum up. With the and rule, it's going to be false most all of the time unless I have two trues. So this one doesn't have two trues, so that's false. This one doesn't have two trues, so it's false. This one has two trues, so it's true. This one doesn't have two trues, so it's false. Now, this this is the truth table for that statement. That final one, that final column, the one in red, 
it tells us everything we need to know. And I'll just kind of explain this. If both P and Q are true, then that statement is a false one. If P is true and Q is false, then it's also still a false statement. If P is false and Q is true, then the whole thing is true. If both P and Q are false, then it's a false statement. And you can just kind of see here, the only time that thing is going to be true is when you got P false and Q true. You're probably going to have some questions like that that'll ask you um, looking at a particular truth table and say, uh, when is this thing true? And in this case, it's only when P is false and Q is true. All right, any questions? We're going to do another one, so don't get too upset if you afraid to ask but yeah it's kind of oh, it's just confusing really well like i said is um uh, this is all just taking it one step at a time from those well right now we just got three basic rules we got the negation which is just the opposite we got the or which is it's true unless there's um two falses and then we got the conjunction which is false unless you got two truths. And all we did is, I'll just go back through. We started from the inside out. We did the, uh, the conjunction rule. And it's true as long as there's not two falses. So two falses made this false, but there was one true and all the rest of these, so those three were true. The negation is just the opposite of P there. P was already decided it's true, true, false, false. So the negation of P is false, false, true, true. It's just the opposite. And then our last step is putting these two together with the conjunction rule. So the conjunction rule, unless you got two trues, they're false. So two falses, I'm sorry, true false is a false, true false is a false. This one is true because there's two trues. And another false true is also false. So that's the truth uh, table for it. It's this one right here. And that tells you in what circumstances this is true. Now, uh, these are kind of just um, basic statements we're working on. As we get a little bit further on towards the end, we're building towards an argument and finding out if an argument is valid. And we'll see what the criteria for that is in a bit. But I'm going to do another one. Because I don't want y'all to. Not have uh, the ability here to understand it. Because it's really not that tough. If you just kind of look at things. One step at a time. All right. So the next one was. All right, so this is P or Q and P and Q. All right, the placement of those different symbols is important. The V is the or that uses the rule where you just have one true in there, then it's going to be a true statement and it's false if you have two falses. The and is the more stricter situation where if you've got uh, any number of falses in there, it's false. You have the only time it's true is if you got two truths. So let's build this one step at a time. All right. There's still only two statements. So I'll put that in here. I didn't really, I just told you this, but. And that comes from two to the second power. All right, just in case you're wondering. Because there's two statements. 
four rows. If you have one that's got three statements, and we'll look at one of those at some point. We probably won't look at, we may not have a chance to get to it today. It might be Tuesday. But with that, you're going to double the amount because every time you add a new statement, you double. So thankfully, we're not going to have a whole lot of that. Anything like four rows or anything. I mean, I'm sorry. Um, four statements would mean 16 and five statements, um, 32. And you really have to have a computer for that kind of thing. Somehow. All right. So let's go ahead and just do what we had before we had. All right, so um, I'm gonna do my four rows. All right, so um, here's the P and that represents the Q. And as I said is, if you handle it like this, that the first column is just half truths and half falses. Then this is going to fix it for you. Even if it's eight, you would still do the same thing. And then essentially on your next uh, column, you do half again. But in this case, you do half truths and half falses. So instead of two truths, you got true, false, true. Falls and what are the on um, no matter how many uh, rows you have, if you have eight, your last column is always going to be true, false, true, false. All right, so that gives us every one of the situations that we need. All right, and I went ahead and I should have. Uh, Made this a little bit bigger. I'm just going to go in the order that they're given, but we got two parentheses, so we got to do the things inside the parentheses. Mr. Cruz, mm -hmm. does it matter which one we start with or no? Well, in this case, it doesn't, but I'm going to be safe and just go left to right. Okay. Since they're both in parentheses, um, you could start with the other one if you wanted to, but I'm just going to go in order. So this is the first one, P or Q. All right. So the P or Q is just the same rule that we've been using, that as long as you got one true, then the statement is true. All right. And then this one is an and. And remember the and, it's got to have two trues for it to be true. Otherwise, if it's got one false in there, it's false. So this is the only one that's true on that. All the rest of them are false. Mr. Cruz, isn't the third one supposed to be true because they got one true, two truths or no? You talking about this one here? Yeah, the third one on the third row. You see where it says truth and truth? It's supposed to be true, right? I'm looking at these two. I'm looking at the original statements. I'm, this is P and Q. Oh, oh. We're know. not looking at this one yet. Oh, okay. We're okay. going to use this in the next iteration when I put them all together with this. Okay. But yeah, you're, you're looking at the ones that are uh, in here, P and Q. So now, now we're going to do what we're, um, what you're probably thinking is you're going to use these two columns because you have to have it boiled down to one column in order to put these things together. You're putting together one column with another column always. You can't put together more than one. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to put together both of these. With the end. All right. So the key thing to remember is, is we're using this right here on these two columns. So we're just using the and rule. That's the only thing that's important. We've already done this. We've already done this. We boil this down to one column. We boil that one down to one column. So now we're going to put those two columns together with and. And the and is most likely going to be false unless we got two trues. This one is true. That one's got a false in it, so it's false. This one's got a false in it. It's false. That one's got two falses, so it's false. So that truth table right there, or that's the truth values, the truth, and that's the important one, because all these other things in between here were just steps to get to this. So what that tells us then is when P is Q, true and Q is true, then it's true. When true and false, it's false. False and true is false. False and false and false. So what this essentially tells us, if you will, we'll talk about equivalent statements later, probably Tuesday, but this is really just equivalent to this. You notice that both of these things are the same. So those two things are equivalent. And I'll just write that down here. Oh, I got that right there. It's not the same thing. All right. We're going to talk more about the equivalences, but that's essentially, I'll just bring it up now. The equivalence means that every one of the truth values are the same. And see, true, true. False, 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 false. All right, let me see who else is here. Because, uh, is she a black? I don't see if she is out there. Let me know. Mashika is here. Uh, yeah, Catherine, when I talk to her, Karina, I don't see Karina. If you're out there, Karina, Yelp. And let's see. And Jalen Washington, I don't see. All right, so uh, any questions about that? We'll do more truth tables, but it's just, uh, like I said, is... Uh, This is uh, for, for using or and and in the negation. We're going to bring in the other two now, and then we're going to have more options on what we can do. All right, so um, there's still two statements, uh, two connectives to talk about. It's the conditional and the biconditional. Um, The conditional is by far the hardest one to explain. I find myself every semester trying to come up with an illustration that best explains this. But the way you can boil this down to is the conditional statement is true three out of the four times, just like the or was, but there's different one that's false. Remember, order is important here. And so when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false, then the 
the entire statement is false. And what this amounts to is the conditional statement is essentially a promise. If you say, if you jump out of that window, you will go splat on the ground. All right. So the only time that statement is false is when you jump out and don't go splat. Because if you jump out and go splat, that's a true statement, promise fulfilled. If you don't jump out and still go plat, we don't have to worry about that one because there was no promise. And then if you did not jump out and you don't go splat, that's still the promise fulfilled. Uh, you can almost kind of attribute this case three to what we would call God's grace because it's given you know that the outcome is given based upon not having performed but the only time that it's a lie is when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false So order is important, okay? Now the biconditional, like I said, this one is a lot less common, but this one, it works both ways and we're gonna see that here, what, what, that we can build the biconditional with, the other, with two other statements. But what it amounts to is you got two trues, two falses, so it's evenly balanced. The way I like to describe it is, if both the antecedent and the consequent match, it's true. Otherwise, it's false. Another way to look at it is, this is also called equivalence. That if two things are exactly the same, either both true or both false, then it's a true statement overall. Let's see if I can paste this over. Oops, I didn't mean to take it out. Just wanted to copy it. Okay, so the way this one is, uh, reads is, it's if P, then Q, and if Q, then P. So this is actually a um, statement would be a conjunction because the last, the most dominant operator is this due to those parentheses. If it weren't for the parentheses, um, well, actually, it would still be. No, it, it, it would be a conditional statement without the parentheses because the, the, the conditional is most dominant. So you need those parentheses uh, to keep those two dominant ones repressed until you do the last conditional. All right, so we've still got four rows. These two are going to be our P's and Q's there. So one, two, three, and four. All right, so. Uh, B and Q, and as I had said, is if you follow this pattern, make half of them true, and the other half false, and on this, it's true, false, true, false.
Okay. All right. So the first thing we need to do, and I'm just going to do them in order. We could do either one of them first. In this case, it wouldn't matter. But order is always a good way to go. So we've got to go to this parentheses first. Now, as I had said is, the order is important because of the fact that um, this thing is only false when you have the first one true and the second one is false. So this one is true. This one is true. This one is true. And this is our false one. Now, uh, I just kind of saw something here that... Uh, and I'm going to do this. I'm just going to rewrite them. To make it easier to see, I'm going to rewrite P and Q and, and put them in the opposite order because this is if Q then P. Because if you don't get that order right, then you got a problem. So I'm just going to take Q and write it here. and P here, so that way I've got them in the right order for this one. So then uh, Q is the true false. All right, so uh, now here we're going to do if Q, then P. If you're good at reading backwards, you may not need to write, rewrite them. But um, I have a tendency to scramble things in my head and write them backwards, even if they're not actually backwards. So I'm going to be safe. So now, true, true is true. False, true is true. See, that's the one that was down here earlier. So when we turn them around, that one moves up here. And then this is the false one now. OK. So now, the two that we're looking at, and I'm going to put them in yellow. Oops. I'm looking at that one, and I'm looking at this one. The safe thing to do if you want to know the truth is just always, um, if we take this one, these two and just wrote them right next to one another, that's the safe thing to do. But uh, I'm doing it this way just so that we know we're looking at the ones that are in yellow. So this is. All right, so that's going to be these put together with that and. There's the rule we're using. We're using this one, okay? Oops. We're using the and rule. On these two columns. Now remember, the and rule is it's going to be false most all the time unless you got two truths there. So true and true is true. Say true and true is true. False and true is false. True and false is false. And true and true is true. So in the process, if you write a statement out, you can end up kind of eliminating some of your falses. So this right here, even though it's a conjunction statement, we still have. Um, We've kind of changed it so it's not like the normal conjunction anymore. But this right here, just a note,
Oops. So what does that mean? Well, just notice that I had said about the biconditional statement that when the t when you match them up, in other words, you got two trues. If they're the same, then it's true. And two falses is also true, but when they're mixed, they're false, biconditional. It has to work both ways. And essentially, it's the same thing as equivalent. When they're equivalent with one another, then this is true. When they're not equivalent, it's false. All right, any questions? All right, so let's do another one. All right, so now, um, again, uh, and one of the things I might uh, emphasize is if you're, uh, it's always a good idea to do these things on paper. Now, one of the things you've got in Alex, they got a pretty nice system where you could add columns that don't count as part of your answer, and you can delete them and, and move them around and stuff like that. So really there, you don't necessarily need to do it on paper, but. If you wanted to just draw out one with um, four rows, then you could kind of just Xerox add and use that same one over and over because it takes a little bit of time to build these, as you see. I may have one row too many, but it's not going to hurt anything. So I'm going to have a P and Q, and then I'm going to have this one. Whoops. And actually, um, this is very similar to the other one. So I'm going to handle it in the same way. I'm going to write them backwards here. All right. So again, this is the same thing. This is like just carbon copy. All right, so I'm gonna do this one first. So this one is the same old thing, just like we just did. This one's true, true false is false. False true is false is true, and false false is true. Only one case is, is false when you're dealing with the conditional. That's when the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. Now you don't have to rewrite them as long as you're good at rewrite uh, as uh, long as you're good at reading backwards. We can try it like that rather than rewriting them. But you've got to make sure you're reading backwards. So true true is true. False true is also true. This is the one where the first one, the Q is now in first place, is the false one. And like I said, is if you wanted to do it like this, there's no shame in that because not everybody likes to read backwards. I don't like to do it. So, uh, oops. Q first.
And then you can see again here, two trues is true, false true is true. Here's the one that gives us the problem with the false. True, false is false. It's now in the third position. False, false is also true. Now, again, we're doing the same thing we did before. We're going to look at this one and this one to build the last one. You could, if you really wanted to, to um, um, rewrite those and put them right next to one another. Uh, I, I used to do, try to do that in practice when I was uh, actually studying this because it meant that I was always only looking at the last two. Now this one is slightly different. Because there's not an or and in there, there's an or. So how does that change factors matters? All right, so I'm looking at these two and I'm using the or rule. Remember the or rule, it's going to be uh, true as long as there's one T in there. It'll only be false if there's two falses. So two, true, true is true. False, true is true. True, false is true. And true, true is true. Now let me just give you a definition here. Ah, I'm trying to. Let me just go over and paste the copy and paste it. So that rule, when you, when you see that word banded about tautology, that's all that means. It just means that it's a statement that's always true. So when both P and Q are true, it's true. When uh, P is true and Q is false, it's true. When false is true and Q is true, it's a true. And when both cases are false, P and Q are false, it's also true. And this is going to be the backbone of, of things later on, because when we actually do arguments, and an argument is always a conditional statement. This is not an argument yet. But if it's always true, in other words, if it's a tautology, it's called a valid argument, as we're going to see. We're not going to see that today, but that's what that means, tautology. It's just because every one of the outcomes, it ends up being true. All right, let's see with a few minutes we got left what we can do. So uh, this is what I just said about the tautology. Uh, but a self-contradiction is just a statement where we always have falses. If there's all Fs in a final outcome, then it's a uh, what we call a uh, self-contradiction. Hold on a second. Do we? We didn't have one, but... Uh, if it's all falses, it's called a self-contradiction. It's not really that important because it's not useful. Unlike the tautology, the tautology is true, is, is very useful because that's what we use as the basis for our arguments. And then an implication is just a conditional statement as a, taut as a, a tautology. And as I had said before, um, 
when we have a conditional statement, it's by definition an argument. And if it's all T's, then it's a valid argument because it's certain things apply. But let's just look at the summary of, ter of, of truth tables. And this looks pretty bad because I couldn't get all these to line up like I'd like to, but here we go. This is now what they actually call a truth table and each one has got its own situation. Remember, for, for the uh, negation, there's only two possibles. If we start out with a true statement and we take the negation, then it's a false statement. If we start with a false statement and take the negation of it, then it's a true statement. And then down here, these are all supposed to be lined up. But you got to get these, these are different, right? So the and is, it's true only when both are true. If you have one F in the mix, then it's false. The disjunction or the, the or, it's true in all cases except when you have true, two falses. The conditional is true in every situation except where the first one, the antecedent is true and the consequent is false. And then the biconditional is just, um, if they're the same, it's true. If they're unmatched, then it's false. All right. Uh, I don't know if we got enough time to do uh, three, but I'll just show you how to set them up and then we head out. Okay, so this one. Wait a minute. Yeah, it's got three. Okay. to the third power eight. So this is the most that you'll ever see in this class because like I said, as you, it gets real confusing, real big, real quick. So let me just show you how we'll set it up. So this is going to have P, Q, and R. And remember, each one of those is supposed to be different. So the way I'm going to do it, uh, well, let me get, draw my uh, rows. Makes it easier. One. So um, again, half and half, so four trues, and then four falses. All right. Now, the last one, the R will be true, false, true, false. But again, what we're going to do here is half and half. So we're going to go two trues, 
and two falses all the way to the bottom. So two trues, two falses, two trues, two falses. And then the last column is just true, false, true, false, just like in the fours. True, false, true, false, true, false, all the way down. And you'll notice that every one of those are different. Uh, we might be able to knock this one off real quick. So the first one is not P. So it's just the opposite of P. So four falses. You're just putting the falses in the truths however you want to, right? No, I'm following the rules. Oh. What does the negation mean? Okay. It means what? If something is true, then the negation of it is false. Oh. If something is false, then the negation of it, it is true. true. That's all I'm doing. Okay. I'm applying those rules. These are not just pulled out of my head. I may do how to do that sometime because I, you know, get distracted. But we're just following those rules. The negation, we're applying the negation rule here, which was on P. So instead of four trues there, we got four falses. Instead of four falses, we got four trues. All right. So uh, that's that. And then we're going to put, uh, I'm going to make the inside real quick. And that's using Q and not P. And again, I'm going to outline it real uh, quick so that we make sure we're looking at the right ones. We're looking at this one, and we're looking at this one, and we're applying the and rule. So the and, it's going to be false as long as there's one false in there. So that's false. False, 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 true, true, false, and false. All right, and then we're going to put that together with the or. We'll put uh, this together with R. And I want to outline those in red. So this is what I'm looking at now. Looking at that one. And I'm looking at that one. And then I'm just going to go ahead and write it in red. So we're doing the whole thing. We're using the OR rule on these two columns. All right, so true and false is true because as long as there's one true in there, we're all right. That one's got two falses, so it's not good. False, false is also false. So there's a true and false is true. Oops, false and false is false. Oops, this is a true. True and false has got one, so false, false is false. True and true is true. False and true is true. True and false is true. False, false is false. So there's our final truth table right there. Oops. All right. So it finished just in time. We'll, we'll do another one on uh, Tuesday. But anyway, try to stay up. Make sure as soon as you can that you're working on this material because you can bring back questions. We're going to have a couple of work days um, after we finish Chapter 3 to actually um, answer anything you want before the next test, okay?